Hola, mi gente bella, querida y hermosa. Thanks for watching Medicine, Faith, and Fashion, and this is Valerie. Well, today, he just decided to jump in with me. This is my beautiful poodle, and his name is Kai, and he has been a key component of me being able to just be okay for the past three years, and I'm so grateful for him. Isn't he a beauty? Yes, you are such a beauty. You are such a beauty. Yes. Today I want to talk about the clinical experiences that got me into medical school. Disclaimer. This might have gotten me into medical school, but it might not be the same for everyone. These are my particular experiences que fueron las que me ayudaron a entrar a la escuela de medicina. Y no tan solo eso, sino que me proveyeron con la experiencia necesaria para darme la certeza de que sí, yo me quiero convertir en una doctora. Let's just understand what clinical experiences mean. Clinical experience is defined by any activity that you engage with a patient, direct contact, or also any project that you work for the benefit of a patient. The first example that I want to talk about is being a medical interpreter. If you are bilingual of any two languages, you can also become a medical interpreter. In my case, I am a Spanish medical interpreter at a nonprofit Christian clinic here in Seattle. The process of getting accepted to be a volunteer, in my case, was turning in the application, which included my CV resume and a brief essay of why I wanted to become a medical interpreter. Fast forward, I took a blood-borne pathogen training and the HIPAA law compliance training. It was significant because you want to keep the confidentiality of the patient as part of the medical team. This is one of the best experiences I had as a pre-med because it gave me insight onto the thought process of a physician depending the symptoms of the patient. And it also helped me understand the nonverbal communication of the patient and knowing what's really going on. It also provided me with understanding of the medical terminology in both languages. I also was able to shake off that feeling of being nervous when talking to patient. And I just learned so much. This was such a great experience. The next one is engaging in a project that helps a patient while you're shadowing a physician. I say this because shadowing a physician alone is not considered a clinical experience because you're only observing the physician. And this is extremely helpful. I shadow different physician, surgeon, internal medicine, pediatrics. It was very helpful and I obtained a lot of knowledge and I loved it. However, you can go an extra mile. After you have been shadowing the physician for a couple of months, you can go a little above and beyond. You can ask if the physician has any project that you can work on that is going to give you clinical experience as in engaging with a patient. In my case, the physician I was shadowing helped me engage in a project that he needed to complete. Because physicians are so extremely busy, they'll be happy that you ask them to engage in this project. The project was about the INR protocol and how taking coumadin interact with certain foods for the geriatric patients. I didn't know anything about this topic. However, I said yes, I took up on a challenge and I just did my research and I compiled all the information that I found and I completed a fast fact sheet. It was not a huge project, but it was very helpful for the geriatric population that is on coumadin, the medication. I learned so much for that. It was a new challenge. And it also gave me the opportunity for the physician to know how I really work. And I also asked for a letter of recommendation of this physician because I was working with this physician for six months. I completed a project. I went above and beyond. I also followed up with questions and I was very interested. And I didn't want to just check out a box. I wanted to really engage and really understand. And the third activity is engaging in a local health fair. I was able to volunteer in a local health fair 
by taking patient intake form, guiding them to the right booth, and also sometimes taking vital signs. This was extremely fun. I learned so much for, from different patients' interaction. Also, a lot of health fairs are asking for many volunteers. Even if it's not engaging one-on-one -on -one with a patient, you can network in these activities and get to know physicians, get to know like providers. That will get you those clinical activities. I cannot stress enough how network, 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 networking is so important because with that physician that you knew, he can recommend you to another physician, another colleague that is on pediatric, for example, or surgery. And that way you can just build your resume and create that confidence that you need to write about those experiences that matter to you. So thank you so much for staying this long. I hope you have a wonderful clinical experience coming your way. And thank you for watching Medicine, Faith, and Fashion. Please leave in the comments any other topics that you would like me to talk about. Y gracias por apoyar a esta boricua.